Gaming Vault presents 15 hardest levels in modern video games you won't soon forget. Difficulty in video games is a funny thing. Some love it, some hate it. A lot of people these days like to play games for the experience rather than the challenge, to enjoy the story or to simply explore the mechanics at their leisure. Some, on the other hand, love the kind of games that challenge them, that put their skills and abilities to the test, and demand involvement and interactivity at the highest level. We understand that such games aren't for everybody. After all, no one game can please every person who ever plays it. But there is just something about them that draws people to them in masses. In this feature, we're going to take a look at 15 levels in modern video games that stand out in our memories mostly because of how devilishly difficult they were. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. This list is in random order. Also note that there will be spoilers ahead. Forbidden Woods, Bloodborne. A Soulsborne game with a challenging level? What? I don't believe it. Forbidden Woods is essentially a microcosm of Bloodborne as a whole, a single segment of the game that perfectly encapsulates everything good about it. The Forbidden Woods are a Metroidvania-style labyrinthine arena, filled with interwining shortcuts and paths, brimming with terrifying enemies, deadly traps and ambushes, hiding innumerable secrets for the skilled and thoughtful player, and capped off with a badass boss encounter. From its stark atmosphere to its oppressive art design to even the foreboding background music, Forbidden Woods is a reminder of everything that makes Bloodborne one of the greatest games of this generation. Upper Blight Town, Dark Souls. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of these entries in the future, but you probably already knew that. But yeah, Upper Blight Town is an utter and absolute pain, but in a good way, like all things Dark Souls. From the inconveniently placed trolls to the extremely pesky toxic dart shooting enemies, to making sure you don't fall to your death, which is a constant and very real danger in this area. Upper Blight Town requires immaculate skill and precision from the player at all times. What makes it so good, though, is that it does reward the player with some pretty sweet items. Laura Chase, The Evil Within. Basically, all of Chapter 10 from The Evil Within has to be one of the most difficult levels in video games over the last few years. From the traps, to the boss, to the ridiculous one-hit kill mechanics, to just its sheer length. But it's the chase sequence involving the horrifying Laura Victoriano that gives us nightmares even to this day. The interesting thing is that you don't even have to actually fight Laura, and at least on paper, running away from her and simply shooting at pipes and dodging obstacles sounds kind of easy. But it isn't. It really, really isn't. Siege of Osaka, Neo Defiant Honor. The Siege of Osaka from Neo's Defiant Honor DLC is one that divides opinion among the fans of the game, and for good reason, too. There's plenty of stuff in the level that feels unfairly difficult, but there's plenty that stands out among the best moments of the entire game. The constant volleys of arrows and cannon fire that the player is bombarded with can easily get frustrating really quickly, especially if you don't make proper use of the cover that is provided for you, while the hazards within the stage are also a sour spot for plenty of players. The final boss at the end of the level, though, is absolutely amazing, if only you didn't have to trudge through this level before having to come up against it. Blackreach, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Skyrim isn't exactly what you'd call a tough game, owing to its very vast and sandbox nature. But there are still a few areas in the game that provide a fair bit of challenge. The best of these has to be Blackreach. What makes this area so special is its huge, sprawling design more than anything else. Players can easily get lost in Blackreach, while also having to contend with all sorts of enemies, such as giants, centurions, and more. It's all worth it though, not only is this one of the best looking dungeons in the game, it's also a great area for finding rare items and objects and farming soul gems. Frigid Outskirts, Dark Souls 2, Crown of the Ivory King. Oh, the magical frozen wasteland of ponies that makes you want to gouge your eyes out in frustration, and constant blizzards that won't even let you see the tip of your own nose. Frigid Outskirts is quite different from what you usually see in a Souls game, and it's fair to say that it's not the most popular area among fans of the series. It's a vast, open arena, as opposed to the tight, cramped spaces that Souls fans are more accustomed to, while constant obstacles such as respawning horse enemies and a complete lack of visibility make navigation an exercise in patience. It also doesn't help that the final boss encounter is pretty much a reskin of an earlier fight, making this entire area seem a little pointless. Boletarian Palace, Demon Souls. 
Yep, another Souls game. The very first Souls game, in fact. The very first level in the very first Souls game, actually. In retrospect, Boletarian Palace seems like a walk in the park, especially to people who have been to hell and back countless of times over the course of five games and their respective DLCs. But back when this formula of gameplay was new and fresh, and people played Demon Souls for the very first time, this area was positively horrifying, filled with dangerous enemies, defined by excellent level design and overseen by powerful, terrifying dragons. Talk about iconic. Glowing Sea, Fallout 4. I can't tell you how many times while trudging through the area known as the Glowing Sea in Fallout 4, I literally threw up my arms in frustration. But the good kind of frustration. Visually, the Glowing Sea is striking and it enhances the atmosphere and the setting's credibility in spectacular ways. When you have to actually make your way through it, it can often test your patience. The area emits constant radiation that always eats away at your health unless you take measures to counter it, and even those aren't always foolproof. While it's also littered with hosts of high level enemies that can easily pummel you to death. Deadwing Cavern, Fallout New Vegas. Another modern Fallout classic, the entire setting of the post apocalyptic Las Vegas from Fallout New Vegas was stunning to behold and traverse, but some areas just stood head and shoulders above all of the others. One such area, of course, was the Deadwind Caverns. Attempting to enter this cave, especially at lower levels, was in no vague terms a Herculean task filled as it was with hulking beasts and enemies, while the death claws residing within were nothing short of the stuff of nightmares. Castlemark Tower, Final Fantasy XV. Some of the best areas and dungeons in Final Fantasy XV are the ones you don't even have to enter to finish the main story, and the perfect illustration of this point is the Castlemark Tower. Everything about it is a challenge, right from even entering the dungeon, to the high-level enemies lurking inside, to the final boss encounter. Even visually, it's a sight to behold, with a memorable exterior design that will stick in your memory and an interior design that unexpectedly takes you deep into the depths of the earth. If you're anything below level 65 and don't have a sack full of potions and phoenix downs, enter this area at your own peril. Archdragon Peak, Dark Souls 3. Don't worry, this is the last Souls entry in this feature. And if you've played Dark Souls 3, you know it is completely deserving of a spot on this list. It's fair to say that Archdragon Peak is perhaps one of the most challenging areas you will ever visit in a Souls game. From the hazards to the pack of enemies that are always awaiting to ambush you, who oftentimes don't even telegraph their attacks, Archdragon Peak is a constant struggle. To top it off, if you ring the bell, you're rewarded with one of the best Souls fights ever in the Nameless King. Rhoda Chiga Shrine, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, The Champion's Ballad. Shrines in Breath of the Wild and the Champion's Ballad DLC are an absolute treat. Most of them, anyways. The Rota Chiga Shrine from the DLC can give you anger management issues, not to mention a broken Switch controller or console. Never in my life have I seen a single area as full of spikes as this particular shrine. Spikes on a conveyor belt, spikes beneath platforms, revolving spikes that will kill you if you don't keep moving, giant spiked balls and giant spiked walls. It's a bit much, even to give you a lifelong phobia of spikes. Scholomance, World of Warcraft. New Age World of Warcraft players may not entirely agree with this pick, but back in the vanilla days, before this was nerfed, or nerfed again, Scholomance was among the toughest dungeons in the entire game. The boss encounter was hard as nails, the area was riddled with diseases, all the linked patrols were packed really close together so that you would literally have to choreograph your way through the dungeon, while there were entire trash swarms that could aggro you through walls. Sounds daunting, yeah, well, you have no idea. The High Road, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. Three out of every five dead dual shocks in 2017 were broken as a result of High Road in Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. We're assuming. The original Crash Bandicoot games and their 2017 remake are known for being challenging games, but this particular level takes the cake, though not necessarily in a good way. The difficulty level of High Road is actually quite frustrating at times, like the distance of several jumps or enemy placement to just name a few of the issues. Of course, there is a glitch players can exploit to cheat their way through the level, but if cheating serves as the best option to play through a level, you know it has issues with design. The Perfect Run, Super Mario Galaxy 2. Super Mario Galaxy 2's The Perfect Run can drive even the most impatient person into a fuming, murderous rage. 
If you are a completionist, there's no way you can avoid this level, but if you value your sanity, it is recommended that you do. It's a fine balance. The perfect run hurls you from point to point, throwing a series of increasingly difficult obstacles your way almost constantly. The catch, though, is that you cannot get hit even once, otherwise it's game over. We love Super Mario Galaxy 2, but we also know where this particular level can stuff it. And that'll be about it for this one. If you guys like what we're doing at Gaming Vault, please consider subscribing to our channel, and I'll see you guys on the next video.